Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the worst Magic player ever. And we all have definitions of what it means, so if you have a definition that's different from mine, leave a comment below. Or if you have a similar experience and you want to feedback on what I, this video, uh, also leave a comment below. So my definition of the worst Magic player ever, and I'm considering this because of game day. Game day was a week ago. And now I can kind of, in hindsight, look at what happened. There was a player at game day who... Game day top 8 is not particularly difficult in my area to get. And then everyone gets a promo full art Thunder Break region. And that card what is currently worth $22 today. But when it was game day, since it was Saturday... You didn't know what it was worth since TCG player actually had none listed at the time we were checking prices. Now the worst Magic player in my opinion is someone who tries to take advantage of someone else. So money, is, money and Magic go hand in hand, I understand that. Uh, what I cannot understand is why some players value the money element or making money or something like that along the lines of valuing that more important than the game itself. Uh, obviously, if you cheat, if you trade shark a magic player and they realize what's going on, they're going to have a very bad taste. Or if two weeks later when they get a little bit better, not even two weeks later, two months later, two years later, when that player gets a little bit better, they still have uh, horror stories. And if you guys have a really bad horror story about trading, leave it you know in the comments below. But essentially, this card was worth... $22. How do I know it's worth $22 at a time? Because I traded one at value for $22 and I could have got as many as I wanted for $22 but I mean I already had a place that I didn't I just needed one for EDH. So this guy valued his dragons which are $22 again or $25 for $40 in trade and was he picking stuff that was not useful? No he was picking a playset of Restoration Angels, uh, I believe three Tassigers, a... What's that one in Affinity? It's a very popular Affinity card played in all Affinity. Oh, Arcbound Ravenger, and two Dragons, two Dragons worth like five bucks a piece, as well, like two Hellbent Dragons, I believe, from Gatecrass. It's a Mythic Dragon from Gatecrass, and all the Dragons have seen an increase in price. As well as, I'm missing a few, so Playset of Restoration Angels, oh, Death Miss Raptor, which at that time was $18. So he wanted, for his two promos, he wanted about $80, but then he was going to settle for, he was going to settle for $38 for one promo. And yeah, I mean, it kind of gets to the point where if he's trading with me like this, you know from his bind, especially from his binder, his behavior, he has probably trade sharked a ton of kids or new players. Uh, just his audacity to take a card that's worth, let's say, $25 and value it at $40 and not even blink at it. $40 of modern staples, essentially, minus the only non-modern staple was the missed, uh, missed, uh, Death Miss Raptor, which is a pricey card right now. Yeah, so... I don't, you know, I don't really get this type of player. I do, and my belief is the Magic is a, it is an amazing community. It is such a uh, community that accepts everybody. But when you have people who do this time and time again, and th this was the first time I've traded with him, or was going to trade with him. This was the first time I have seen him at my local store. But I've had this experience at Groovy Geckos and some other place in Richmond where there are certain people who all they do is trade shark little kids and new players and that's all they do. They go there, they go to different stores in the area, they go to GPs, they go to, uh, they especially go to pre-release and they don't play pre-release because they're too busy trade sharking everyone and that in my opinion is the worst magic player because the once, even if you're a new player, you're a returning player, whoever you are you will eventually figure out this guy took advantage of you. Not by a few dollars, but by multitudes of two to five times. And I absolutely am disgusted by um, 
And many reasons uh, why I'm disgusted by the behavior is I can, you know, in the past I haven't always been, uh, you know, I have considered money more important than playing magic and I have acted in that way. So I can see how he's acting and I can see, I can tell you, um, as long as you value m money over playing magic, you will always be that way. You will always con shark little kids, you will always shark new players, you will shark anyone. Remember, I know my prices from his trade, from my trade binder, he should be able to realize this guy has a pretty decent trade binder, I probably shouldn't shark him. But to have the audacity is kind of like cheating. If you're going to cheat when the camera's on you, you're going to cheat when the cameras are not on you, guaranteed. If you're going to shark with somebody with a good trade binder and they know what they're talking about and the prices, like Restoration Angel, I've always known the price of, um, and cards like that, then you are going to shark little kids. You're going to shark people who do not know the value of these cards. Uh, I guarantee you. Like when a cheater gets caught, oh, I've only cheated once. Like, like how unbelievable is that? You've only cheated once? Oh, how unlucky you are because you cheated that once on camera. No, you probably cheated dozens to hundreds of times for you to get the audacity to cheat on camera. Same with sharking. Uh, and I know sharking very well. Like I would probably be the YouTuber who knows sharking the most. <laughs> and that's not something I am absolutely, I am absolutely not proud of that fact. And when you shark one person, when you shark, when you're trying to shark somebody who knows what they're trying to do, that just tells me you have sharked all the people. You have sharked every person you've ever traded with, because that's how a shark mentality is: a value, value, value. When you have a twenty-five dollar card and you're valuing it at forty dollars, I believe it was forty-four dollars, uh, was what the eventual trade came out to. Then there's not very little you're going to do. Um, there's not very. I mean, you don't have the ethics to tell me you don't, I believe that I absolutely believe that you have sharked before and it's not a mistake uh, the way that it's done is oh look at this price look at that price oh this is a card you might say oh the card just came out but he was a very experienced player he was a legacy player he knows his prices he knows what promos are worth he we have eBay at the time there was a lot of factors where and the way he presented the trade, where he was trying to pressure me into taking the trade, which is absolutely unacceptable. If you don't want to make a trade, do not let anyone pressure you into making the trade. And I feel like this channel has gone <laughs> completely full circle right now. And I used to uh, make videos like this very often, but they had a different tone to them, um, or the objective was different. But now I'm going to tell you guys very simply, people like this do exist and they don't get better. They, if you, at the end of the day, all they care about is money and anytime they can rip off a new player, a experienced player, a trading veteran, any of these players, anytime they can rip off a magic player, they will. And they have no ethical qualms about it because they've done it so many times. They actually have this feeling, this gut feeling that if they're not getting the maximal value from the trade, they feel bad as opposed to they feel bad because they are ripping off people who don't know or even people who do know and they're getting like a edge over them. I don't, I don't know. Um, in my opinion, those are the worst Magic the Gathering players ever. I'm making this video directly in response to my game day experience and I haven't seen a player like that for a very long time since Groovy Geckos. And uh, I just want to warn you guys, they do exist and their only objective is to trade. They will go to pre-release and they won't sign up. They will just spend the entire time at pre-release trading. <laughs> and it's kind of like you don't even enjoy this game. Bye guys.